Okay, we're still talking about the fundamental theorem of calculus. And I want you to think again about some function f that's a function of x. And we have some x value. And there's some area enclosed by that x value. We'll call it a. And we said earlier that that area can be found by integrating function f of x. And specifically, the area at point x will be the integral from 0 to x of f of x dx. So if we can find, if we can integrate function f of x, which means find the antiderivative, then we can find the area enclosed by that graph. And we saw several examples of that with some simple functions. What I want to show you now is that we can come to the same conclusion geometrically if we look at a little tiny piece of the area along the leading edge here. As x goes to the right, we're going to consider an incremental change in the area. So let's draw this again. Here's our function. And let's imagine x is right here. But let's imagine x increasing a bit. So we have some function a. And, and there's a certain amount of area enclosed here at point when, when we're at x. There's a, when there's a certain, at a certain x value, there's a certain area enclosed. But now let's imagine x increasing a certain amount. So this distance from here to here is my change in x, which I'll call delta x. And that corresponds to this increase in the area, which I'll call delta a. So as x moves to the right, and this is the incremental change here in x, the delta x, we get a little bit bigger area. It's increased by delta a. Now we want to find the area of this rectangle right here. Imagine this is a little rectangle. The problem is, if we zoom in here, we see that the top of that rectangle isn't flat. So let me just draw that zoomed in a little bit. That's sloping down at that point. And we have our x and our x plus delta x over here. And if we try to calculate this area right here, this delta A, as a rectangle, well, we need to know what to use for the height. If we use this as the height and we calculate the area like this, we're a little bit off on the low side. We have this much error introduced right there. On the other hand, if we make a rectangle like this and calculate the area, then we're a little bit off on the high side. And we have this much error introduced. Now the good news is if we let our interval shrink really small the error gets less and less and if we let this delta x right here go all the way to zero the error completely goes away. So as delta x approaches zero the error disappears and that little change in area becomes exact. So I'm going to draw this one more time now and think of it in terms of calculus. Here's my my function f. And at some x value, and I'm going to draw a little thin strip, and I'm going to pretend like this strip is infinitely thin. Okay, This little strip right here has a width that I'm going to call dx. And it has an area that I'm going to call dA. So here's my area and then it's increasing by this tiny amount dA. And I can think of that as rectangular. Even though it doesn't have a flat top right up here, that doesn't matter. The error that's introduced by that top not being flat is zero if this dx is really infinitely thin. So now I think that area in general, area is height times width, the area for a rectangle. The area is the height times times width. Well, in this case, instead of an area, I have this little this infinitesimally small area, this infinitely small area, which I call dA, and the height is the height of the function, which you could call y or f of x, and the width is this infinitely small dx. So we have dA is equal to y times dx, or I could just rearrange that, and I can algebraically manipulate that to say dA dx is equal to y. And this is a very meaningful statement. We're saying that the rate of change of area with respect to x is equal to y. The rate of change of area is equal to the height of the function, which is exactly consistent with what we said back at the beginning. Or I could take this statement right here, dA equals y dx, 
and I can integrate both sides. So I'll integrate the left and the right. And the integral of dA, remember integral means sum. That means the sum of all these little tiny dA's. So if I imagine a whole bunch of little tiny dA's all infinitely thin, and I'm adding them up, the integral of dA is just going to be A. In other words, the sum of all of those infinitely small areas is just the total area. So the left side is just A. And the right side is the integral of y dx. And that's the antiderivative of function y, or if you prefer, function f of x. And specifically, we're doing this from 0 to x. So let's put our limits on here. We're integrating from 0 to x. So we can say that a is the integral from 0 to x of y dx. That is, the area under the graph at some point x is found by taking the integral of our function y, or again, if you prefer, our function f of x. And now there's just one more step in our thinking. Okay, we've been talking about some function, f of x, and it could be any function, and we're talking about starting at zero and going up to some point x and accumulating all this area as we go. And it's the sum of all of these infinitely thin strips as we go over here to point x. And we've said that the area is the integral from zero to x of f of x dx. Or we could say the area is equal to g of x, where g is the antiderivative. And we've seen that the antiderivative function gives us that area from 0 to x. But what if we want the definite integral not from 0 to x, but between two points, which we typically call points a and b? So what if we want this area between two points? Instead of going from 0 to some point, we're just going from one point to another, from point a to point b. Well, hopefully you can see that the area marked right here is going to be all of this area that I'm shading now. Okay, That entire area minus this piece over here on the left. That will be the area of this region. And we can write that. The area of this whole thing will just be the antiderivative function at b and then we subtract this, the antiderivative function evaluated at a. So we can say that that area right there that we're looking for is equal to g of b minus g of a. Where again, g, this function g that shows up there and there, is the antiderivative of function f. And that is, in fact, the fundamental theorem of calculus the area, the integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to g of b minus g of a, where function g is the antiderivative of function f.